Hello, everybody. All right, we're back. You just opened with the uh, David Moore Dallas Morning News. And you just opened talking about the, the kicking competition and, and when you had a, a day like you did yesterday where neither was that good, how do you respond and, and just from there? Yeah, I think between Liram and, and Jonathan, a little more older guy, veteran guy, and a young rook, it's a, kind of a cool balance to let those guys compete. Haven't really been a part of a competition quite like this with the kind of experience and age difference. Um, and then you kind of answered the question. You know, the day like yesterday, kind of knocking a little bit of rust and the dust off is let's see how they respond. And I think that's a huge part of being a kicker is missing a kick or two and three, having a bad day. And you let it you know, affect you the next day. And I told the guys yesterday, I said, you know, kickers and cornerbacks got to have really short-term memories. So we addressed some, you know, just mechanical things, and they got to come out and let it ride the next couple opportunities for sure. Uh, Todd Archer of the ESPN, what's the impact that CD's increased role is the number one receiver and Tony's increased role? How does that impact your return game? Where, where do you look? It's, it's a huge impact. I mean, those guys, the two years I've been here, have been outstanding. Part of it is you look at the 48 dress, they're already dressed for their offensive role, so you're not necessarily adding somebody that um, isn't on that role except for, like, returning. So CD punt returning and Tony kickoff returning has been a huge bonus, and they've been really damn good at it. And that role might be limited this year. And so you guys know we picked up, you know, Turpin, and I have huge aspirations for him, as well as a couple of other guys we got to compete for that spot. But losing those guys will be a little bit of a change. It's also one of the reasons that on special teams we don't have a playbook, because a lot of times the return game especially is dictated by who the returner is. And for me to just put together a, a playbook return without knowing who my returner might be just might not fit. So the return will be determined by who the returner is and we'll schematic that around who that might be. But um, yeah, I expect those guys to not carry probably the same full-time role returning kicks. You always never had a playbook? Is that, is that different? Most About the last, I don't know everybody else, probably the last, I don't know, eight, 10 years maybe, maybe even less than that. I just got to a point where I spent a lot of time in the off season, you know, putting together a playbook. And then you get to training camp and then the season and the returner changes. and you know, instead of a real small, fast bounce guy, you got a bigger, thick running back who's a vertical guy. And I said, well, I'll rip these pages up. So we kind of really just work on training camp and OTAs, just drills, skills, techniques, fundamentals. And that's our playbook. And we say, this is going to apply to really no matter what we decide to do. And I think it's, it's been good for us. It's let me watch more film in the off season instead of, you know, typing up and putting together a book that just isn't as valid, I think, for, for what I have to do. Yeah, that's a, that's a good balance question for me because part of what I want to do with these guys is encourage Liram and Jonathan. I mean, they're all – obviously, Jonathan's a rookie and Liram's really a young NFL guy. And they need encouragement, but they also know I told them um, that I'm going to be very critical of their kicking and their mechanics. I'm not going to um, demean them in any way, but I think, hey, we got to tighten some stuff up here. And – it is a balance between, you know, giving some, some good, honest feedback that might be a little bit strong. And like, hey, we're all right. Let's go. You know, it's a 59-yarder yesterday into the win on the last kick, and we expect you to make hard kicks. But I also get it. That was a hard kick. So there's, there's a good balance, and I think they're real good guys, and they're very responsive. And I'd rather have them experience some tough days early and okay then they come out just guns blazing, and then all of a sudden it's a tail off. And so um, I'm hopeful. One more, you mentioned not having the playbook. Uh, do you in the offseason say, okay, here are guys who might return and here are what their strengths are? Is it more like that to so at least know when the person gets in what you want to do? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. It's a great question, and it's hard to explain. So there's common drills and techniques that I'll use. 
that will just drill and drill and drill. And then based on what we end up scheming up for week one Tampa, those will apply to what we're gonna do. And if you ask, well, what are you gonna run in the preseason? Well, I'll tell you, cause it doesn't matter. We'll have one punt return and one kick return. And it's gonna be all man stuff cause we just wanna see one-on-one -on -one matchups. So what you're gonna see in the preseason isn't what you're gonna see in the regular season, but all those drills that we work on will apply to what we end up putting in in the regular season. And then in the regular season, we have a weekly playbook, if you will, it's more of a scouting report that shows the guys this is what we're running and they already know how to do it. So that's kind of the cool part. We know how to do it, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Great question. First part of it, I'm very excited, I'm very excited. I was actually, when we worked him out back in Dallas, I was with my family in Idaho, and I texted Will. I said, Will, if you want me to come back for this workout, I'll come back. And he's like, no, we got it. We'll film it. We'll send it to you. And he's been on my radar since 2018. Clearly, you know, at TCU, I've watched every single one of his returns. And then keeping an eye on him over the course of his fan league, football league, and spring league, and then USFL, I've seen all that work. So when we found out that he was on our radar, I was very hopeful and obviously when we signed him super excited and he's got a long long way to go to compete but i think this is a um a team that has you know a potential role for him and i hope he exploits it i can neither confirm or deny <laughs> probably <laughs> michael galkin michael. dallas morning news coming off the kicker inefficiency of late is there something to be gained by shortening the range of some of the attempts, or is that not the type of precedent you want to set coming off of a bad series of performances? Yeah, I think, you know, I want these guys to make hard kicks. Uh, if you were there at the beginning of practice, we stayed in the 37 to 51 yard range. And then we had the competitive period, you know, we backed them way up just to, because of mostly for competition purposes for also the offense and defense. So coming off a day like yesterday, I think, you know, we got to keep it in the high 30s to low 40s range to say, okay, these are, these are kicks that are probably the most common, you know, the 44 yarder that you just got to make. Um, so I don't think I'll, I'll soften it up on them, but I think we'll put them in range of, you know, the, the long 30s to long 40s, that kind of 10 yard window that I think is fair to evaluate. Like you got to make these kicks. And we actually have a pretty good breeze out here. I said, this is the Giants. This is, the Red this is Washington. This is Philly. This is going to be t uh, Tennessee, and it's going to be Green Bay. So we've got to make outdoor kicks that are hard, you know, with a little bit of element. Now, on Turpin, he's listed as 158 pounds. Do you find precedent in a player that light as a returner that gives you confidence that he's not too small for what you might be asking of him? Yeah, I coached in L.A. I had uh, JoJo Natson for a season and a half, for two seasons. And I thought he was fantastic. Um, and then I think there's probably been a lot of proof of a lot of little guys that are really, really good. Uh, Eric Metcalf, I don't know his size, Dante Hall, you know, maybe a little bit thicker, but Turk's probably a little bit quicker. Um, so I think there's a lot of them, you know, Tyreek, obviously he's maybe a little bit thicker, but I think the little guys, I just know when we practice against the little guys and play against the little guys, they're, they're really hard to see behind blockers and then if you can never see him it's really hard to get a, a clean shot on him so for those little quick fast guys you got to populate tackle him and if you don't then you don't ever really get clean shots so I think it's a little bit um, overrated the impact of a little guy taking big body blows because they just don't seem to take those and um, I'm excited to see what he does John David Hellman Fox Sports you were with Greg for so long and he's kicked so many NFL field goals how does it change your approach as a coach when you have two guys that have done so much less in the NFL? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I kind of had reverted back to 2012 when Greg was a rookie. And I kind of said, what did, what did we do when Greg was a rookie? Because when he was a rookie, we had competition for the first like two or three years that he was with the Rams in St. Louis. And it kind of reverted back to those memories a little bit of a, a young Greg who was um, very talented, little bit sporadic, probably like most rookies. And how do we tighten them up? You know, a lot of it is the snap and the hold. Uh, a lot of it is film watching. 
hard critique, some competition, which is great that we have too. I don't know if I'm answering your question very good. Um, but as you, you saw Greg ascend, um, there was a lot of things we did over the course of 10 years that I think helped that. You know, some back surgeries hurt him, but, but I'm hopeful that, you know, some of these guys will make an ascension where Jonathan's a young guy, so he ha hopefully has a decade plus in him. And, you know, Liram hasn't had many opportunities, so he's pretty fresh legged. So I'm excited to see what Liram can do. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the experience that I've kind of reverted back to in my brain is how to critique these guys and be strong, but also encourage them when the bad days come. Because I told them before we started, I said, you guys are going to miss some kicks, you know, and load it back up and the next one, let's go. That's why I don't have them kick like eight in a row. It's two on, two off, two on, two off. They catch their breath. They make it. I'm back up. I miss it. Catch my breath. I'm back up. You mentioned a little bit about the operation for the kicker success and a big part of that. How have the snaps been so far to the untrained eyes? Seems some have been off a little bit. I don't know if there's the same velocity. Is Jake working through some things at all? Or how's yeah, Jake, part of it too is the operation. There's, a, there's little intricacies for each kicker, how they like it held and when their trigger is to go. So, um, you know, I limit Jake's snapping a little bit in the OTAs and in the summertime and have him just train. So there's an acclimation for him just to tighten some things up, just like Brian, too. You know, Brian's punting is, has been good in the spring and summer, a little bit lower volume just because we expect to play for the next seven months. So, and they're the only guys we have on the roster, so I don't ask too much of them in the summer. But there's some things for sure that they know they got to tighten up. If you want to know what it is, I said, Jake, one thing you got, and it's accuracy. And Brian, one thing you got to work on, and it's consistency. And so that was before camp even started. And so that's kind of proven that, Jake, keep working on that accuracy, especially on the field goals. Hit it right here every time on the punts, right on the right hip. And then Brian just working on that drop that, you know, you, you get into such a good routine in the season. It's like just money, boom, boom, boom. Then you're coming off the summertime where you don't kick as much, and it's finding it again. Yeah, that's the most important, to be honest with you. So when we scrimmage Denver and the Chargers, uh, we have field goal periods scripted, and those will be second to the games. You know, we get into the games, that's the number one evaluation for me. Uh, when I was um, in Oakland with Janikowski, and then even sometimes with Zerline, you know, they go through some things in practice and pregame warm-ups, and they're just kind of just tightening it up, and then... I don't want to judge them necessarily on that as much as obviously, you know, when it's a 47 yarder and there's seven minutes left in the second quarter and we got to make this kick, you know, does he make it? So I hope I answered your question. The game, absolutely number one eval criteria. Um, the scrimmages are great opportunities, even though there's not true pressure. It's just different for those guys seeing a line in front of them in a different color jersey running at them in a corner coming across my face on my follow throughs affected. Um, so pretty excited. Yeah. Uh, Christy Scales, Cowboys Radio. Each summer you're working with rookies who didn't play coverage or return in college. And now you've got, for example, a wide receiver who's now getting work as a gunner. Talking with Dennis Houston yesterday, he said he really didn't play teams at Western Illinois. How is he looking at some of these other guys that are getting exposed to this for the first time, but Houston in particular? Yeah, Dennis, Dennis has been really sharp. And me and Coach Stu, my new assistant, you know, we talked about a lot of these guys and how is it going to translate to, to the game? So, you know, we come out here with no pads. It's like, okay, let's get some drills. We come out here and practice with the pads, and it's like, yeah, it's pretty tight. But then when the, the live gun is shot and the, the tackle body's got to go down, it changes. So um, to answer your real question is every year we get the rookies, and it seems like none of them played special teams in college. And if they did, it was three years ago when they were a freshman because they all become the best players on their team. Um, so it's honestly my funnest challenge in training camp is to take these guys who maybe don't know this is going to be their role, even though that's what it's going to be, and to make them really, really damn good at because that's what their role is going to be, and they really don't know how to do it. Damone Clark this morning, before the special teams meeting started, called me over and was kind of whispering, like, Coach, you got to you know, teach me when I can get healthy how to play special teams because I've never done it. And I said, you just made my day, and it's only 7 o'clock in the morning. You know, that's my pleasure. So um, part of my thing, too, is to 
to make special teams attractive. Like, this is, this is your role, and this is a great way to instill yourself in the National Football League. But this is pretty cool here too, huh? You know, you get to go against this guy, and you want, you want to win, and you want to look good. So um, that's it's a fun challenge, and it is definitely a big one. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, you guys. Yeah, awesome.